Hey guys, it's Dr. May. Thanks for joining me tonight. Um, we're going to be continuing with our very interesting topic about our five developmental movements or actions and their psychological significance. Of course, got to throw in the psychological angle there, given that I'm a psychology kind of a gal. Okay, so this is the third in our series, and we're going to continue with the movement of reaching. So just as a just over overview from the last couple of times, in case this is the first time you're joining us, although I suggest you kind of watch the videos in order just to get a better idea of the progression. But um, first thing that happens when we're very, very little, including in the womb, is yield. So it's kind of relaxing our body into the support of another person or object. And from there, if we had that solid foundation, the next thing we might want to do is to push away from it and become more of a separate person. And we're, we're kind of really defining our boundaries a little bit more. We're creating some more self-protection. And from that more separate space, I might start to think, oh, now that uh, I have a little more freedom here, I could reach for something else or somebody else. So the reaching is the next logical movement, which we're gonna flesh out a lot more today. And then of course, after that, the natural thing to do is to grasp the thing you're reaching for and then to pull it toward you. And once you have the satisfaction of really getting that person or object close to you, you can relax into it and yield again. So that's why it's all in a big circle. So um, reaching uh, respects our desire to connect with others, our desire to um, extend beyond ourselves into something else, to reach for a goal, to reach for a companion, to um, reach for an object, of course. And it reflects our natural desire to be curious, to, to have compassion for others, even to reach out to help others, and our, our longing for more than what I have right now. So um, a healthy reach, what is that all about? So ideally, um, if we don't have any conflicts about reaching for a person or thing that we want, we could, really, we could reach out in a very relaxed, open and integrated and healthy manner without any conflicts about it. So our palms are up, our arms are fully extended, we're open to receiving, and we're basically expecting a positive outcome. We're pretty optimistic that someone will reach back or that the thing I'm reaching for will be available to me and it won't be a problem. But it does take a little courage, you know, because if I reach out, there's always the chance the person may not reach back, or there's always the chance the goal or the thing I want to reach won't be available to me. So there is a little risk involved, and that could be a little uncomfortable at times, a little scary. But <clears throat> if we take the, you know, the, the courage to do it, we could, you know, uh, possibly, ex you know, expand our world and expand our connections. So that's always a positive thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So the first thing we do is to reach toward people. So let's think developmentally. So that's why I have some pictures of young children. So we reach toward our caregivers. It's a way of increasing um, our caregiver, you know, the proximity toward the caregiver. So if I reach out, hopefully the caregiver will reach back. It helps bring people closer to me. It's a signal that, hey, I want you to come around and be there for me. So it um it's sometimes if, when I'm mobile, I could move toward people. Other times, if I'm sitting still, I could reach toward people. So it's a way of increasing connection. And of course, we all need healthy connection as human beings. Um, but the manner in which we reach can vary depending on our experiences of people reaching back or not. So if we haven't had a lot of positive experiences over time, our reach starts to, to shift. So we end up, you know, maybe reaching out more tentatively or we reach out too frantically. Um, so the reach gets impacted based on our forecast of what's gonna happen next. And that forecast was developed based on our earlier experiences, such as repeated experiences of how a caregiver responded to us. All right, so a little bit more about that later. But the other thing again about reach is, um, in other cases, a reach is to reach towards somebody to offer care or to offer compassion. So just as a caregiver would reach toward us to help, um, we would we could also do that too. Even young children reach toward each other in a caring way when they play at times. Okay, so the next thing that we do, even as young children, is to reach for objects. So we're very curious about the world around us. This is about the way we explore. So 
Uh, we could reach for toys. We might reach for things that are new and interesting. And so it helps us um, interact with our environment and um, help it satisfy our needs. So I might want to reach for something that will be helpful to me, maybe a, a bottle, maybe a toy, maybe a person, maybe, you know, something that will help satisfy what I want right now. Maybe a blanket because I'm cold. So this reaching toward objects reflects our natural curiosity, our desire to question, explore, um, connect and, and learn more about things. Uh, because, you know, we, we naturally, uh, especially when we're little, we don't know much about the world yet. So it helps us get to know the world. Um, <clears throat> it's uh, related to our desire and our need satisfaction, like I said, because it's about satisfying needs. Um, and it, there's a sense of healthy entitlement. Like there's a sense of, yeah, it's okay for me to reach for that. I'm allowed to reach for this thing or this goal or this person. And so, yeah, I'm a, it's, I have a certain kind of confidence about it. It's okay for me to reach. And if I don't have that, it affects the manner in which I reach. <clears throat> okay. So, but if it doesn't happen in a healthy way, because of the responses that I got over time, like I was saying before, the reach could be either too intense or too weak. So if it's too intense, um, it could take the form of maybe reaching for more than we could handle. Kind of like, you know, I'm reaching, 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 and now I can't even hold it all because it's too much. Um, I'm biting off more than I can chew. I'm taking on more responsibilities. I have a hard time saying no, and I keep needing to prove myself. I need to show that I'm enough, so I have to keep reaching for more and doing more. So it might leave me overextended and exhausted. Um, at other times, there's a certain kind of desperation behind it, a needy quality. So, or a demanding quality, like I need you right now. I need this right now, please, please. You know, it's like a like that hand coming out of the water. Like I'm drowning. I need somebody, and that sometimes could have an impact on relationships because it could burn out other people. People could have a hard time responding to you in a way that feels right to you as often as you want them to. So it can restrain relationships at times. Um, another issue that could come up is that an intense reach can reflect a feeling of entitlement, not the healthy entitlement, but like an unhealthy entitlement. Like I deserve this, or I deserve that, and I don't care who gets in the way. So it may be like reaching for something without regard for others. So in a little child example, it could be a kid reaching for another kid's toy and just taking it without asking permission. In adulthood, it could be a man reaching for a woman and sexually harassing her just because he wants to be with that woman. So, you know, that's another form it could take. Um, or, I, you know, I'm reaching for a certain position in my job and I'll do anything to get it, including lie and cheat and steal and step on other people. So that's a, a too intense reach situation or situations rather, but, you know. Okay, uh, so other times, especially if we have an inner sense of being undeserving, maybe because of other responses we got where we felt like I, I don't have the right to what I'm asking for, or I'm being a burden to others by reaching for it, or who do you think you are trying to reach for that? It can even be a sociocultural reason. Sometimes maybe a person of color is reaching to achieve something educationally or in the job, in the workplace, and society is telling them, no, not, not for you. And so they might feel like, gee, I, you know, I, I, maybe I'm not allowed to do that. Or if I do it, people are going to cut me down. So there could be social reasons for it as well. Um, or it could just be from the way you grew up in your family or the way you're socialized with other kids. Maybe you wanted to um, make friends with people and you were rejected. So it's hard to reach out to other people or you were bullied. So, you know, you feel like, geez, I, I don't belong. So I can't reach out for a friend because I'm not going to get a friend. So that's something I, I see a lot of people struggling with. Um, so you might be one of those people too. Um, so uh, the second part I wrote here is maybe may relate to a fear that we can get rejected or invalidated. And the picture I found in the middle there, like, let's say the guy wanted to reach toward the girl and maybe you know give her a hug or get closer to her and she's pushing him away and it's it, the risk he took is not working out and so maybe the next time he's going to hesitate a little bit 
Or if you reach out to give somebody a pound and they refuse your pound, or you reach out to shake someone's hand and they don't shake your hand, it feels like, ooh, maybe the next time I'm not going to, you know, go as, as uh, confidently because I don't know if it's going to work out. All right. So some reflection to do here. Yeah. All right. So developing a healthy reach. So this is what we're all striving for. Um, this concept and, you know, the, the reason for why we struggle with reaching and some ways to develop a healthy reach is fleshed out a lot in my sensory motor psychotherapy video called Connecting with Others, which is lesson 33. So um, as you can see in the bottom right, so this is from, you know, Pat Ogden and Janina Fisher's book, Sensory Motor Psychotherapy um, from 2015. And they have some illustrations that, that show different types of reaching. So they encourage you to try the different types, see what feels familiar to you, what feels unfamiliar, what emotions and thoughts and body sensations come along with them, what memories might come along with them. So it helps us be more mindful of the way we might typically reach out and relate it to the way we grew up and how it might have been adapted to develop that reaching style. And then it helps us to practice more healthy ways of reaching, such as the top middle figure there and and to practice that so this is more about reaching toward people so what i wanted to add though is maybe some ideas for reaching toward objects or goals because that's an issue as well what kind of things do i feel a healthy entitlement to have or what experiences what um you know accomplishments am i allowed to have or not and how does that affect my reach so i want us to explore that a little as well and we have to, you know, use our imagination a little bit. So what I would suggest is if you notice that this is coming up for you. So let's say you've been contemplating, gee, should I ask for this promotion at work? Or should I leave this job and go for a better one? Do I really deserve it? Should I reach for it? Um, should I really go for that vacation I'm, I'm hoping to take, even if it costs me a little bit of money? Can I achieve that? Can I learn this new skill that I'm trying to learn? Uh, is that within my reach? So if that comes up for you already naturally and you're already feeling it, I would see, see if you could practice maybe with a friend or a therapist, or if you have to on your own, you could be creative about it too. And practice like having an object that you believe symbolizes the thing you want to reach for and slowly practice reaching for it. What kind of reach do you exhibit? What does it look like? Let's say the, the diagrams here. What does it feel like inside? How does it impact your building blocks, which are some of the things I included here, your emotions, thoughts, body sensations, the way you're moving clearly, and any images or memories that come up. So um, kind of related to your past experiences, how does it make sense that I'm reaching this way? And maybe how do I start to shape it toward a healthier style of reach? Um, help, you could even exaggerate the way you're reaching just to help you understand it better, to understand the experience that triggered it better, because it might bring up more of the building blocks and if you exaggerate your own style. <clears throat> and you might notice that there's a, a conflict that part of your body might be pulling back while part of you are, is reaching forward. And so there might be, you know, a little bit of an inner conflict about reaching for your goal. A part of you feels you deserve it, part of you feels maybe you don't deserve it or maybe um, you're afraid of the reaction of other people. So exploring that split can be helpful as well. Um, and then you could also practice reaching out for that symbolic goal in a more healthy, integrated way and see what that feels like or see if any anxiety comes up. And if it does, you could you know, go back to the old way of reaching, try the new way, soothe some of the anxieties you have, try it again. And um, you know, just practice it and see how that reshapes your experience. Okay, so that's my my tip of the day for that one. Okay, so stop share and wrap it up. So got a few things to think about, about your reaching style and what that means for you. Um, you can even relate this to something like the deer man skill in DBT. And uh, we actually recently did this in one of my DBT groups because um, deer man is all about asking. So how does your assertive asking go along with your body language and what you naturally feel like you could reach for. So check it out. So have fun at trying it out and I'll see you soon in the next video. Thanks everybody. Take care.